G'day legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. We've got our rapid review coming your way for round five. Now this week brought to you by the Parramatta Eels. The Eels reached out to me the other day and invited me to once again go to the field club. Brought to you by Jim Beam this Saturday coming. Uh, so they're taking on the North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, that'll be a 5.30 click kickoff and I'll be there in the field club having a great time, making a bit of content and whatnot. And you guys have the opportunity to join me. I have two free passes to join me in the field club 5.30 next Saturday for the Parramatta Eels versus the North Queensland Cowboys. What you have to do is go to the description of this podcast. There will be a Parramatta Eels link there. You have to fill out that survey. Once you've filled that out, you go into the running to win those two tickets. Now, the Parramatta Eels, being the great people that they are, they're actually playing on TV at the moment. I'm keeping one sneaky eye on them as we speak. Uh, But they have put up not only two free passes to the field club, which is the very best game day experience rugby league has to offer take my word for it i've been there a couple of times the field club is where i did the live show at the start of this season the field club is also where i slapped up the great jermaine hopgood out there at combank still haven't washed this poor yet it's still hanging in there bart simpson style uh it is fantastic out there but not only have Parramatta put up two free passes to the field club they've also put up a 2024 signed Parramatta eels jersey by the entire squad absolutely unreal so two free passes to join me in the field club this Saturday 5.30 p.m. when they take on the high-flying North Queensland Cowboys and a signed jersey. You have to go to the description of this podcast or of this YouTube and you need to fill out the form that is there. Now, make sure it is 5.30 this Saturday in Sydney. The date is going to be, I would guess, around about the 13th of April. I believe it is. It is the 13th of April, the day before my wedding anniversary. Should know that. Shout out to my missus. The 13th of April, 5.30 p.m. It's at Combank, so it's in Sydney. So you need to be able to make that game, obviously. I'm going to go through all of the people that have filled in the survey at about Wednesday or Thursday and pick one out randomly and start getting on the dog and bone and making phone calls to all of you to see if you are able to join me. It's going to be a cracking night. I've got one of my best mates coming with me to film a bit of content. He knows his way around a brewski, so you'll have a fantastic time with us. Make sure you're a Parramatta Eels fan and you are able to attend that game. Fill out the survey in the description. If you can't find it, send me a message on Instagram and I can flick you in the right direction. On that note, Parramatta and the Canberra Raiders are currently playing on the big screen as we speak. Unfortunately for me, these games are start at 6.15. It means that in order for me to film the review, uh, it means that I have to start it at 8 o'clock. It means I have to do it. I finish at 9. I upload it. 10, 30, 11 p.m. It's just too late for you guys to consume it. So what I'm doing, recording a little bit earlier, we'll catch up on the last game of the week a little bit later in the week. We'll do it on Bloke in a Bar in depth and whatnot. But so you guys can have it as soon as the last game finishes. I think it's the best way to go about it. All right, let's get stuck into the very first game. The Melbourne Storm, 34 points to 32 over the Brisbane Broncos. Really enjoyed this game. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it on a dry track. I remember going back in time. It's easy in hindsight to look at it differently. But in time, we thought this was going to be the best footy we'd get all weekend because of the insane weather. Friday was an absolute clusterfuck for weather. After that, it sort of did clear up, to be fair, though. But in this game, uh, the Melbourne Storm, I thought Eli Katoa, he was amazing, scored two tries. He, he actually came up with an early intercept that I was a little bit rattled for him. Uh, I was a little bit worried for him. I thought he'd be a little bit rattled off the back of that. But bounced back with a tremendous game, crossing for two meat pies. He was ever at Eli Katoa, very impressive. I thought Harry Grant had a cracker as well, just scheming around the middle, always causing havoc. Very, very dangerous. Uh, Husey, another vintage performance by Husey. Uh, that, oh man, that combo with Eli Katara, I think it's one of the most dangerous in the league now. They are lethal. Will Warbrick had a bit of a mixed bag here and there. Um, obviously had some moments that he would he would like to have again. I have no doubt about that. Letting that ball bounce to Ezra Mam to score the great one, of, you know, the closest thing we've probably seen to the Nathan Blacklock try in the 1999 grand final. One that Warbrick would, would want back, but he did some really good things at the same time. Uh, probably my favorite moment of the evening uh, was the try that he scored. There was a play where they went down the right-hand side. Uh, they hit Eli Katoa, hit and spin. Popper opened open, popped back to Pappy. I almost had a stroke there. And Pappy, just with his hand, just go bang, whoosh, go. Uh, only touched it for a split second. But just every, everyone in that play pulled the right rein. So very, very good to see. Uh, the Melbourne Storm getting away with this one, 34 points to 32. Probably a little bit closer than I thought it would be, to be completely honest with you. The Brisbane Broncos, they are a resilient little bunch. Uh, there is no doubting that. And they're, they're going to be very, very, 
very hard to beat throughout this season, the Bronx. I thought that all things considered, obviously missing Reese Walsh without Payne Haas. Adam Reynolds got injured in this one. They had a lot of things go against him in this game. Brisbane, they still hung in there against, in my opinion, one of the better sides in the competition. For the Brizzy Broncos, uh, Jesse Arthurs, very good performance. Dropped one over the line, but did really well. Um, I thought Paddy Carrigan was just tremendous once again. I know I praise him every single week, but... I think he's a little bit like Isaiah Yo, who we'll get to soon. They put in a 9 out of 10 every single week that I think we've just become used to the incredible numbers they're putting up and we don't really appreciate just how crazy it is that they do it once, let alone week in, week out. So I want to give Paddy Carrigan a big shout-out, doing tremendous things. Ezra Mam obviously, scored a few meaties in this one, um, and he was just electric. <laughs> he's so good to watch, Ezra Mam. Uh, what he scored two tries in this one, just popping up left, right, and center. Adam Reynolds went off. He sort of had to take uh, a little bit more control. On that, on that note, by the way, I thought Billy Walters, he moved to halfback in the second half. I thought he did really well, kept them in this game, played some good footy, the dog and bones going off. We need to put that on silent. Um, yeah, I thought that he was really good, Ezra, man. So shout out to him. Uh, yeah, look, the Broncos missing Adam Reynolds uh, or me missing him for part of this game, that really hurt, wasn't ideal. Uh, interesting to see how long he's out for and whatnot. I believe uh, Dean Mariner as well, who's got some of the best feet I've ever seen. Um, I think he's going to be out for a few weeks. So you would assume that Corey Corey Oates, he'll probably come from the bench uh, and jump onto the wing. So good opportunity for Corey Oates on that right sting. Uh, it be interesting to see what he can do with that. Obviously, Adam Reynolds out, so not you'd rather be on the right sting with Adam Reynolds there. But still, Corey Oates, he'll do plenty of work coming over his own end. I thought he looked okay in the back row, to be honest with you. Did some good things. Um, who else stood out to me from this one? Tristan Saylor came up with some really nice plays. Man, I'm loving watching Selwyn Cobo at the moment. I, I don't think he's getting the rewards for what he's doing. I think he's playing a lot better than what stats and super coach scores show at the moment. Uh, but I've been very, very impressed with Selwyn Cobo at center. I know defensively uh, there are still a little bit of worries here and there, but I think he's been really, really good. Just watching the Canberra Raiders, I think crossing for a meat pie. Uh, that is Hudson Young. I hope that he scores here because I believe he's one of the few. No, nope, he's offloaded. Fuck me. Anywho, um, yeah, look, the Broncos, unlucky not to win that one, uh, but I think they can take a lot of positives from that considering how many guys are missing and whatnot. Let's move to the next game, and oh, my God. Oh, this game was unbelievable. Uh, the Bulldogs, 30 points to 26 over the Sydney Roosters. Uh, the Bulldogs led by an absolute stack. They were flying. Sam Walker was off the field. James Tedesco was off the field. I, James Tedesco, I believe that's his 10th concussion. It'll be interesting to see if he's named next week, and it'll be interesting to see if he misses some serious footy now. Uh, that was really worrying what happened to him there. You never want to see that happen to anyone, obviously. Uh, but someone that's had so many concussions like Teddy, it is very, very alarming. Uh, so we want to wish him all the very best, along with all the other guys that got injured or knocked out in this game. Just just looking through the list here, um, you obviously had Sam Walker. You had James Tedesco. Um, I believe that Maxi King's carrying an injury now. Uh, Viliami Kikau carrying an injury. Blake Taft got knocked out. I want to wish him all the very best. Jamin Salmon, I believe, picked something up in that game as well. So um, a bit of a clusterfuck all round there. Uh, an absolute nightmare. Dom Young, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm a fan of Trent Robinson. I always have been, but... His comments after that game have really hit me for six. I don't know how he can possibly defend that. Um, I actually saw Dom Young. Uh, he was down at – he was watching his brother play today at Wentworth Park. Um, yeah, I just – I mean, just you just can't be doing it, can you? And I cannot believe the way that Trent Robinson defended it, to be honest with you. If you brought him in super coach over the last few weeks, fuck, I feel for you because that might – but that, that, that potentially couldn't have gone worse for you. I think he went 30 into a negative 15. So a very, very tough gig there. Um, look, I'll stick to the Canterbury Bulldogs at the moment because Matty Burton, three tries, uh, one try assist. He was amazing, Matty Burton. So good to see him playing the footy that he was the other night. Just tremendous. I think he shifted to centre at one point out there, scored a good try. Uh, it, just a little reminder of how electric this guy can be. And the guy that we saw on Friday night compared to the guy we saw in round one, sitting on a corridor, looking not keen, not involved. Honestly, just night and day between the two. So full credit to Canterbury, full credit to Matty Burton. I think we need to give a bit of credit to Cameron Serraldo too. Um, when he named his team at the start of this game, I looked at it and thought, what 
the fuck is he doing? I could not believe some of the selections he made and some of the guys he moved around. But full credit to him, mate. Canterbury came out and really played some good footy. And you can say, oh, they did it against 12. They did it, you know, missing players, blah, blah, blah. The first 30 minutes, they were the better team by far and away, in my opinion. And they were the better team even before started. guys started to leave the field. They were getting on the front foot and looking really good. So Reed Marnie, he was fantastic. Got through a stack of work. What about Sammy Hughes crashing over for a meat pie? 72 super coach points. I sold him last week. Fuck, don't love that. Uh, Billy Army kick out. He was amazing. He was just untouchable in the first half. Obviously got injured, so we wish him all the very best, but he just looks so destructive. That jersey that Canterbury wore, I absolutely loved it. You've seen it all over my social media this weekend. Uh, arguably my favorite thing of the entire weekend, that jersey. So full credit to the Canterbury Bulldogs. Unreal. Josh Curran, solid once again. Very good. Kurt Mann was fantastic. I think he's picked up an injury too, so... Very, very tough. Um, some of the talking points out of this game. Uh, the Victor Radley one, I personally didn't think that was a sim bin. Uh, a bit hard to make sense of that one for me. I thought that was a little bit harsh. I thought the Dom Young one definitely was a send-off. But I did think Victor Radley... Uh, I, I do wonder if that wasn't Victor Radley, if he would have got sim bin for that. Uh, but I don't think it actually... I, I, I personally think Canterbury were just the better side. The Roosters showed a lot of ticker at the back end to get themselves back into that game. There's no denying that. Egan Butcher scoring a double. Luke Carey was fantastic. And this is sort of the worrying thing for the Roosters. What do you take out of this? Sam Walker plays better when Luke Keery's not there. Luke Keery plays better when Sam Walker's not there. And seemingly, they kind of tend to play both better with Sandon Smith. Uh, I don't know what you do here. But, uh, yeah, the Roosters find themselves in a little bit of a pickle with their halves. They've got two very good ball players, but they can't really seem to gel. Um, and you saw as soon as Sam Walker left the field the other day and Luke Keery completely took over, which we haven't seen him do to a footy side in quite some time. I thought he was fantastic. I think he had two tries, a couple of line breakers. He was everywhere, Kiri. I thought Angus Crichton was very good. His first game starting in quite some time. I thought he was tremendous, very impressive. Uh, and Daniel Tupu, good as well in this game. I'll tell you what, he's got a try in this game, which is all good and well. But, man, I like what White's showing in a forward pack that is just absolutely stacked. Um, he's looking fantastic. I'll tell you who really puzzled me on the weekend. I'm not quite sure the minutes or what happened here. But Terrell May... Um, Got a 21 in Supercoach. I haven't had a look at his minutes. I haven't had a look at it, uh, why he missed. I'm not sure if there was an injury or whatever there, but my God, some weeks he's the most important player on the field. Other weeks it seemingly just is irrelevant to them. Uh, really hard to get a feel on what on earth is going on there. But uh, yeah, look, the Canterbury Bulldogs, they get away with this one. It was ugly. Don't get me wrong. It was putrid towards the back end. The first half, they can take so much from it, but the heart attack they had in the second half, not sure if it was worth it, to be completely honest with you. But I do think the Canterbury Bulldogs have played well enough to win over the last few weeks. Uh, the results just haven't gone their way. So I'm stoked to see something finally fall their way. Um, and you know what? There's two ways to look at it. They won against a good side, uh, or they won because this happened, or this happened, or this happened, or this happened. Just take the win, Canterbury. Enjoy it. Some Sometimes a win is just all you need to get a little bit of confidence under the belt. Um, and I think that they can build off the back of this cannery. So congratulations to them. The Roosters, um, I mean, Vegas looked very impressive, looked great. But since then, uh, it's been a pretty tough watch. Let's be honest here. It hasn't been great. Uh, they've made a lot of changes to their side. They're now going to have to make more. Uh, obviously, Sandal Smith not available yet. I don't know if Sammy Walker's available next week. Um, I'm not sure. I doubt James Tedesco will be available. So, Joey Manu probably shifts to fullback. How long Manu's going to be at fullback, I'm not too sure. Joey Manu, very dangerous at fullback, by the way. I just He's just so one-dimensional. He's just You know he's going to run every single time. Um, the, to be fair, there was a couple of times like the try that the, the Daniel Tupu scored, he let go of the ball. But I don't know. I just... It's just a little bit too one-dimensional for me having him at fullback. I've said this for years. Uh, I, you know, there's games in New Zealand where he runs for 400 meters. Everyone shits himself and goes, "My God!" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, he runs for 400 meters, but does it kind of cramp their attack a little bit? Are you wasting the talent you've got out on the edges? And the Roosters have got a heap of that. That's my only question mark with him at fullback. But no doubt whatsoever, super coach wise, uh, there'll be plenty that'll be running rushing to him this week. Shout out to Timmy Williams, who I assume has fisted me in super coach this week, uh, who didn't go him. So unlucky. All right, let's have a look at the Newcastle Knights and the Dragons, a late game on Friday night in pretty torrential conditions here. The Newcastle Knights making changes this week, bringing Jackson Hastings back into the fray and scored the first try, which is great. Just see. Uh, Jacko got up and did a little shout out to uh, all the journos there. Uh, take it or leave it. Whatever. Jacko's one of those guys that I think he just needs to find ways to get himself up and if that's how he's going to do it, fucking so be it. I thought him and Cogger looked really well together. I feel sorry for Tyson Gamble. I don't think he deserved to get dropped. 
But I do think this is probably their best halves combination. I like that they played Jacko on the left, Cogger on the right. I think that makes sense. Uh, Kalen Ponga was electric. He was everywhere. Um, I am so happy to see him back in an up from last year. I know a lot of people doubted him. And I think after the first two weeks, had a lot of sort of hindsight heroes. So it was like, no, he couldn't do it. Knew he couldn't happen. But I mean, his team isn't even putting it all together yet. His team is still a little bit off. Um, and he's playing great footy, KP. Just going to get some of his numbers up here. Uh, I'm not sure, not sure what he ended up on, on, on in Super coach but 15 runs he had um two line breaks two line break assists one try assist eight tackle breaks scored the try as well like that's in the wet like guys like kp shouldn't be having that much impact on games in the wet like that thought Tuala was good again uh dylan lucas was fantastic came in to replace tyson Rizel. To be fair, they didn't miss Tyson Brazil as much as I thought they were going to. I thought that was going to be a really, really big loss for them. Uh, but KP and, and the troops, they stood up. They were really good. So credit to the Newcastle Knights. Um, in what's been, you know, not an overly impressive start for Newcastle, let's be honest here. Haven't played anywhere near their best footy. Um, you know, oh, oh, fuck, I thought they'd be higher than 13th. But they find themselves with two wins. Um, you know, the same as the West Tigers who are, sitting in eighth place. So it's only really for and against keeping them out of the top eight as it stands right now. And their for and against isn't a nightmare either. So uh, it's only minus three at the moment. So I think with a few wins, they can turn that around. So, I mean, I think all things considered where new, how Newcastle looked the last few weeks and changes they've had to make and players have had missing. Um, I, I think they've come out of the first few weeks. Okay. I think this is the team that they need to run with. You bring Tyson Rizal back in, you plug him on the right hand's edge. Uh, you let him come into the middle late. I, I, I think that they're looking okay. Leo Thompson, was massive coming back in as well. He was very impressive. I thought Jaden Braley was solid in his game as well. Kaipis Paul, very good. Um, so, yeah, full credit to the Knights. Good little W there uh, for the Dragons. Uh, Zach Lomax, uh, it is unbelievable that this guy doesn't want to be in this side and he's putting up the sort of numbers and the sort of stats that he is. 27 runs of the football, 216 run meters, 75 post contact, one line break, two line break assists, one try, six, six, six tackle breaks. Played a little bit of fullback there, looked really good in that period, uh, but I thought Sloan looked pretty good at fullback as well, to be fair, and has looked really good so far this season. I'm not the biggest Sloan fan in the world, but he has looked great to start this season. Um, what Lomax is doing for a guy that doesn't want to be in this team is honestly unbelievable. Imagine when he gets in a team that he does want to be in. I personally think the writing's on the wall. I don't think you'll see Lomax at the Dragons for the rest of the season. I think he will move somewhere where that will be. I'm not too sure. Watching the Parramatta Eels at the moment, I still think a swap for Ryan Madison might be a good play. Not sure if that's something the Dragons would accept or not. Flano's been uh, pretty upfront and honest about what he's looking for, that he wants a top two to three player uh, from a different club because Lomax is a top two to three player at their club, which I'm not sure if that logic applies or not. But Best of luck. We'll see who he gets. Uh, but he's been incredible so far this season, Zach Lomax. Um, Jack Bird, that injury. We do hope he's okay. He obviously was running it off at the back end, but that was a bit of a scary moment. His good mate, Jackson Hastings, uh, who they, they grew up together playing footy and whatnot, uh, came through the St. George system together. You can see the worry on his face because he knows how much Jack Bird's been through injury-wise. So we wish Bird all the very best. Uh, Benny Hunt obviously scored a try off that Zach Lomax flick, which was just off its head. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, some forwards that I thought did well. I thought Francis Molo was pretty solid. 180 odd meters off 180 runs, 73 post contact. I thought he was really, really good in this game. Had a couple of tackle breaks as well. Tommy Eisenhuth, when he came on, very solid. Played his 45 odd minutes. Got through a heap of defensive work. How many tackles did he end up with? Yeah, 39 tackles. Missed three to be fair, but 39 tackles. Good knock. Um, yeah, look, not a heap to jump. Not a stack jumping out of the ground here with the St. George Illawarra Dragons, if I'm being completely honest with you. A game that was played in the wet, pretty poor conditions. Uh, I think it just sort of is what it is. Not sure who these two teams play next week. Let's have a quick look at the draw and see who they take on next week. Uh, oh, so the Knights have got, jeez, the Knights have got the Roosters on Thursday night. What a time to play the Roosters, missing a stack of players and whatnot. Teddy might be out, Sam Walker might be out. Short turnaround. Not a bad spot to be there, just quietly. We'll take that. Um, and if you are a Dragons fan, you've got the long turnaround. You're taking on the West Tigers without Galvin. Uh, at Campbelltown Stadium, to be fair, so not easy. Uh, but I don't mind the Dragons there. I don't mind them at all. All right, let's move on to the next game, the New Zealand Warriors and the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Let's start uh, with the headlined act. Obviously, Latrell Mitchell has been given a three-game suspension. In my opinion, I think that is very fair. There's part of me that thinks Latrell Mitchell might have got a little bit lucky here not to get more, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, I just I, – I, I can't really make sense of 
what goes through Latrell's head at times. Um, you know, to you, every single player in this competition, every fan knows you cannot put your arm between a player's legs and lift. And not only did he lift, he lift and flipped. Uh, off the back of that, also the elbow to Sean Johnson. I just maybe you make the argument he was trying to palm, but he kind of cocked it. I fuck. I just don't know what what to make with Latrell. And you know what? If he was just a bang average player who wasn't the most naturally talented guy, one of the most naturally talented guys I've ever seen, probably wouldn't care this much. But he's a guy that can win a premiership for a franchise. He's a guy that can turn a franchise around in one single run. And we're just, we're just not seeing it from Latrell. Instead, to be honest with you, we see the polar fucking opposite. And it is so disappointing and it is so frustrating. Once again, if he was a bang average player and he was just going about his work, I probably wouldn't give a fuck. But he should be one of the best players in this competition. And right now, he is just nowhere near it. I'm not sure if there's stuff going off the field with Luttrell. I'm not sure if all the media stuff has caught up on him. I'm not too sure. I caught up with him in Vegas. Seemed to be in a pretty good headspace, to be honest with you. So I really didn't see this sort of stuff coming. Um, you know, I saw, I, I, sp- I spent, it was only a, a couple of minutes, but I spent a couple of minutes with him, JD and Cook over in Vegas and spoke to him for a couple of minutes. And honestly, based on just that very small interaction, nothing, nothing seemed... There was no red flags there for me. Latrell seemed happy in Vegas. He, he was bouncing around. He was enjoying himself. And I don't know. It's just all gone to shit. And I just can't put my finger on what the fuck has happened here. But I think it's pretty evident they're just not playing for JD anymore. Um, you know, I hope they turn it around. And there's rumors circulating now. I think Michael Chamas reported earlier that if they don't win next week, um, JD will, will be sacked. And oh, I said to the boys, you know, as soon as Latrell did, did that flip last night, I said to the boys in my group chat, I reckon he's. I reckon JD's coached Latrell for the last time here. I'm not sure if he sees out the next few weeks. And I reckon Chamas's mail would be on the money. That makes complete sense to me. So, um, yeah. Devastating for South Sydney. Uh, they're going to be without Latrell for a couple of weeks. Um the one silver lining of this is that I think you will get the opportunity to see Jai Gray make his debut. That's the move I'd be making, so that's super exciting. Can't wait to see him. But, mate, South Sydney, they've got a leader there in Latrell Mitchell. They've got an absolute superstar of our game, and he simply just can't get out of his way, which is what shits me more than anything. I'm a huge Latrell fan, and I, and I will defend him time and time again when he deserves to be defended. But on the weekend, I, I just don't think he deserves it. I just I can't make sense of what happened over there. It was just fucking bizarre. Let's move on to the game of football, though. We'll continue with South Sydney. Uh, more of the same. Forward pack is just not packing a punch. I was at a, a, a mate's kid's birthday, uh, and I was watching a bit of reserve grade. Saw what happened to Lachlan Ilias. Want to wish him all the very best. My mail is that Ilias was told that morning that he'd be back in first grade next week. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But that's what I have been told by someone at South Sydney. So, mate, if Dean Hawkins was aware of that as well, that just makes it even tougher. Uh, look, I've said for a while, I know Ilias might not be the best halfback in the world, but he's the best halfback at South Sydney. They're going to be without him now. They're going to have to stick with Hawkins, who I personally think the last few weeks hasn't helped him. I think it's hindered him realistically. Uh, and I do not believe he is the halfback to turn South Sydney around. Personally, I'd be shifting some guys around. Cody Walker, I think he just has to be the halfback. And look, the problem isn't at halfback, yeah? Like, oh, I don't want to go too heavy on Dean Hawkins here because the heart, the problem isn't the halfback. Unless your name is Andrew Johns, you're not going to win a game of football behind that forward pack because they're doing themselves no favours. They just refuse to complete sets. They refuse to hold the ball coming out of their own end. Um, and it, it's not the halfback's fault in any way, shape or form. So I don't want that to be... I don't want it to come across that way. I just don't think Dean was the better option over Elias in the first place. But this is not Dean Hawkins' fault in any way, shape or form. Nor is it Latrell's fault. Uh, he takes more responsibility than Dean, no doubt about that. But the forward pack has to fucking show some ticker. And at the moment, they're not. Cam Murray played limited minutes in that game. How many did he end up with? Uh, it felt like he played a lot less minutes than he usually does. Uh, Cam Murray, 60 minutes. Okay, didn't play that much less. I, I just think when, when he was on the field, they just didn't have any ball. Uh, Talos Duncan played 20 minutes again. I just... Fuck, I, I just can't make sense of what JD's doing. And, um, you know, if the reports are true that he could be fired if they lose their next game... I mean, if he doesn't get fired this week, he'll get fired another week. That is just the reality of it. Name me a coach that's ever come back from, if you lose this week, you're fired. Like, it's just bizarre. Whether that's true or not, we'll wait and see. But Michael Chamas, uh, he... He's a South Sydney guy, I believe. So normally male is sort of on the money there. Um, And I wouldn't be surprised if South Sydney want that out in the open. Look, I'm not going to rip and tear into blokes, but just such a disappointing performance all round. Um, I thought coming back into the side, Sean Kepi... Played 31 minutes. I, I don't know if the stats reflected, but just his defense was just so poor. Um, you look at just the amount of errors they made and 
Just the amount of errors they made in key spots as well. Just so disappointing. Uh, three from Cody Walker. Three from Dean Hawkins. Coleman Tungy came with some key errors. Um, Totola. They scored a try. Second tackle coming to their own end. They can't even hold the ball. And this is the thing once again. They're not making errors trying to score tries. They're making errors just coming out of their own end and turning pill over. Uh, very disappointing. They came up against a good foot footy side here, the New Zealand Warriors. That's not ideal, but it was at home. Um, and the Warriors, they just ran a train over South Sydney. So I don't know where they turn to. I don't know what's next for South Sydney. I thought Jack White was good, to be fair. I like his line speed. I like the aggression he comes into the game with. He's showing a little bit, showing a little bit of passion for that jersey, 150-odd run metres. Tane Milne, fuck, as scat as he is, God, he tried hard. Ren for 234 metres, 96 post contact. Might not be the perfect f- footballer, Tane Milne, uh, but if they had 17 blokes that played like Tane on the weekend and just ran the ball fucking hard and tried to take it on, might have been a slightly different story. Um, look, we'll leave it there. But, yeah, South Sydney, they are in a world of hurt and you kind of feel like this gets worse before it gets better. And, you know, in a few weeks' time, uh, you know, and I, it sort of makes sense to me as well, the mail of JD getting sacked if he doesn't win this game. They've got to buy the week after. So at least it gives Ben Ben Hornby or whoever comes in two weeks to try and get something out of this squad. Uh, but when you're down with a record of one and five or whatever and you've got two weeks to think about it, you'd like to think it would be a positive, but it could be a huge negative as well. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Let's move on from South Sydney. That's probably enough. Uh, for the Waz, they are the real fucking deal this year. They are one hell of a footy side. Uh, we said three weeks ago that this side, once they start to win games, they'll make a habit of it very quickly. They've gone three and zero since then. Uh, had some very impressive wins. You got to, and like in hindsight, you look back at it now. Got beat by the Sharkies in a really tight game that the Sharks had played incredibly well in round one. Got beat, got beat after the siren in round two. Uh, the Warriors are a top four team for me, and they're still missing players. Near Corey, Dylan Walker, these. Sort of guys, you know, they had to go with a new 5'8 tomorrow. Martin brained it to be fair, but they were missing him, um, you know, m- missing DWZ as well. So, so many guys come back into this side and they're still just looking tremendous. The New Zealand Warriors, they're the real fucking deal. Chance of clock start, all class, 260 meters, 24 runs, uh, tr- two try assists, one line break assist, one line break, five tackle breaks. Chance, he is an absolute wizard. You love to see good guys do well in rugby league. Rocco Berry scored a try, running, running one of the more courageous lines you will see from a guy at his weight. Uh, defensively, I thought he was fantastic as well. He's really coming into his own, Rocco Berry. Uh, RTS. Just great as always, just dangerous, lethal. The halves, Tamari Martin and Sean Johnson between them. Three tries and three try assists. Uh, they also had two line break assists um, and, and two line breaks between them. So, I mean, when you've got those sort of numbers from your halves, you're not going to lose many games of football. And with these two at the helm, uh, the New Zealand Warriors are going to do very well. AFB and Barnett controlled the middle, dominated the South Sydney pack, did their job as always. Wade Egan, though, take a bow, brother. That was incredible. Uh, the way that Wade Egan is able to summarize a ruck in a split second and execute it perfectly, what I love about the way that Wade Egan plays is the way that he thinks fast and he plays slow. If you have a look at that try, uh, that he comes out, he looks wide, he dummy slow, he slows up, he slows up, makes the defense. It forces them to make a decision. They shoot up and he just plays slow. That is just having complete and utter confidence in your ability and what you can do and trusting the men around you and the New Zealand Warriors they're just all singing off the same hymn sheet and this is what I said even though they lost the first two games I said this is a very very well coached footy side and when wins start to come they will come in a fucking heap and this team is absolutely flying the Warriors rugby league is so much better when the Warriors are doing better I wrote them off at the start of the season I didn't think they'd be able to back it up egg all over my face this team is the real deal this year I am so excited to watch the Warriors week in week out Jackson Ford fantastic Torhu Harris was great Jacob Laban came on and made his debut played 30 odd minutes was very impressive kids got a huge future uh the Waz 34 to 4 full credit to the Warriors I am so excited to watch how this plays out I've already got I've already got my eye on Magic Round they take on the Penrith Panthers up there I believe I think it's Sunday afternoon up there at Suncorp, that one is going to be an absolute cracker. Really, really looking forward to that. All right, let's move on to the next game of Super Saturday. Uh, in this one, I've gone to round six here. In round five, Super Saturday, we had the Manly Seals, 32 to 18 over the Penrith Panthers. Uh, wild. Um, look, I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, the Cola try. 
Uh, that has been a knock-on for 110 plus years in rugby league. A lot of people saying to me, but it went backwards. Sure, maybe it did go backwards, but it's been a knock-on for a very, very long time. And this is where I hate when we just sort of change the fabric of the game. Like that's always been a knock-on. Like 99 times out of 100, 99.9 times out of 100, that's a knock-on. Anyone that I appreciate and respect their opinion on rugby league that understands the game over the weekend has said that should that was a knock on, no try. Now it opens up a grey area. And you know what we deal with really poorly in rugby league? Grey areas. And next time your team, if you're one of the people that's saying they got the call right, that's how it should be. Next time your team loses a game off a call like this that is refereed the same way it has for the last billion fucking times, I don't want to hear your complaints, yeah? This is a knock-on. It has always been a knock-on and it should still be a knock-on. It was a knock-on 110 years ago and I probably reckon it'll be a knock-on in 110 years. That's my take on it. You might disagree. Get out your geometry sets, all that sort of shit. I know rugby league. I know if it fucking, if it's got feathers and it quacks, most of the time it's a duck. And for me, that was a knock-on. Just my opinion. Can't wait to hear yours in the comments. But personally, I thought a knock-on 100%. Let's get to the game. DCE. Wow. 310 games for the Manly Seagulls, equaling up with the great Cliffy Lions as the most tries ever, as the most games ever played uh, for the Manly Seagulls. Fucking incredible stuff. And I don't think DCE is slowing down anytime soon. He, he, could, he could push 400 here. Honestly, he could. Three or four more years, I... Maybe not 400, maybe that's over the top, but I reckon he gets the 350. I'm very confident he gets the 350. He just doesn't look like slowing down. He's enjoying himself. He's still having a good time. Manly's still got Tom Trevojevic, so there's still a sniff to beat anyone on their day. I just can't see DCE going anywhere anytime soon. He's made a stack of money throughout his career. He lives in a fantastic part of the world. If he wants to re-sign, he probably doesn't have to do it on huge overs. He's playing for Queensland. He's the captain of a great side. He's not going anywhere, DCE. He's got a heap more games to come, and I'm not sure if anyone's going to break that record over there at Manly, to be honest with you. And he was great in this game. How fucking good. Scored a try, set up a few. He was fantastic, DCE. I was playing him in Supercoach Draft. Scared the shit out of me. But very, very good performance to DCE. And congratulations to him. Tommy Turbo, what a bounce back. I sold him in Supercoach. Dickhead. Uh, absolutely exploded this week. I'm looking right now behind the camera at the Tommy Turbo uh, figurine that Cat broke this week. Thought that would be an awful omen for him. Turns out it was a cracking omen open omen for him. Uh, so shout out to him. Outside of that, look, they lost Ruben Garrick in the third minute. This should have completely ruined them, to be honest with you. Um, against Penrith, you don't want to give him an inch. You don't want to lose anyone, especially one of your stars, your goal kicker. Manly just went, okay, let's fucking do our thing. Let's roll our sleeves up. And I think a lot of credit has to go to their middles. Aloe was very good. Paseca was tremendous. I haven't looked at his numbers yet. What did he go for? Fuck, only 101 metres. Man, they were a tough 100 metres, though. I thought Paseca was really good. Uh, the other one I thought was great was Nathan Brown. Um, once again, I don't know if his stats will reflect that, but 17 runs, 143 metres. A very, very good game from Nathan Brown. I thought he was great coming off the pine. Corey Waddell was good as well. Uh, Burbo shifted out to the centres. I thought he did a good job. Uh, Olakowatsu. Fuck, he's a handful. 142 run metres, 70 post contact. Uh, he was great, Olakowatsu. To be fair, Burbo did have seven missed tackles, uh, so that's not great. Um, yeah, it's an interesting season for Burbo. I mean, you have a look at Manly and you have a look at the missed tackles. It was only Ruben Garrick who played three minutes and Josh Elliott who didn't miss a tackle in their starting side. So it wasn't a perfect game, uh, but they just did enough to win. They did enough to score 32 points. So shout out to the Manly Seagulls. A very good win. I know their fans enjoyed it. I can't wait to see Tom and Eddie on... Uh, about even this week, that's going to be fucking insufferable. Thank God Tommy Trevojevic didn't score another try or uh, Eddie would have landed about 150 to 1 same game multi and finished our about even season. So thank fuck for that. Uh, but yeah, shout out to the Manly Seagulls. Very good win. For the Penny Panthers, Dylan Edwards. Wow, what a performance. Uh, in a losing side, two tries. I imagine he would have done 250-odd metres, 270 run metres. He was every, only off 18 runs. Obviously took it to the house on one of the tries, but did a lot of work. Uh, try assist, line break assist, eight tackles breaks um you'd probably have dce turbo and dill edwards as the best on the field and if you said dill edwards was the best i'd probably struggle to push back on you to be honest with you he was tremendous had a couple of errors few penalties to be fair maybe that brings him back to the pack a little bit but i thought for penrith he was tremendous um outside of that brad schneider scored the first try shout out to him 34 to 1 we love to see it um yeah outside of that look penrith Isaiah Yeo was great once again. Got through a heap of work. 120 run metres. I imagine he made 35, 40-odd tackles again. 38 tackles, zero missed. He's a fucking freak. Um, look, I reckon... 
the Penrith Panthers, I I think they're there on next week, to be honest with you. I think they're there on that buy. I have heard uh, from people at Penrith that there's a lot of guys in this squad carrying injuries. I mentioned in the Roo crew the other day. Hit the link in the description if you want to have a look at that. My uh, my list of guys that are injured at the Penrith Panthers and are playing through injuries, you can probably great guess who most of them are. But I think they've been eyeing off this buy for quite some time. They need it desperately. Um, and, yeah, you've got Nathan Cleary returning after that. I think there was there's a few guys here who are going to have very, very quiet uh, two-week period trying to mend themselves and get themselves ready for next week. Um, look, you can't be up every single week. The Panthers definitely weren't. They got well and truly outplayed here. It was actually wild, the amount of Penrith fans <laughs> messaged me sort of like a bit doom and gloom, like what's going on? Look, it's one poor game. You came up against a red-hot Manly side that played well. Uh, you are missing a couple of players. You It was a poor performance. You weren't the better side. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but look, I wouldn't be too panicked if I was the Penrith Panthers fans. I genuinely think this side had their eyes on the bye pretty heavily. Um, Jerome Luai, the other injury that happened in this game, I want to wish him all the very best. Hopefully he is sweet. We'd hate to see him miss any more footy off the back of last year and in his last season. Fisher-Harris, first game back. I'm not panicking if I'm Penrith, and I'll tell you what I would love if I was the Panthers. Um, you think about that game like... <laughs> what about Liam Henry, the poor bastard? He got concussed. He actually got penalised whilst he was unconscious too. Very, very tough gig there. Um, but I did love that Ivan Cleary, you know, he could have brought up the Cola moment if he wanted to in the press conference and he just flat out said, no, nah, we weren't the better side. We didn't deserve to win that game of football. I think most coaches would have blown up deluxe about that and um, I think most coaches would have taken that option. I love that Ivan didn't. And, that, and that's what I respect about Ivan. I know some of you don't like him because he's successful and whatnot and whatever, uh, but I really respect a coach that has shit going against them, gets played off the fucking park, walks into the press conference when everyone's looking for the headline of what he says about the bad referee decision and he just says, no, nah, we weren't fucking good enough. That's not up to standard for the Penrith Panthers. Um, I really like that. That's the sort of shit that I like. You all know how I feel about this sort of stuff. Uh, I think that takes a lot of ticker and I think that's what you want to see from coaches in the NRL. I think it sets a really fucking good example. Uh, once again, if a referee decides a game for you, give you the hot tip, you didn't do enough to win it. Let's move to the late game. The Dolphins, 26 points to 16 over the West Tigers. Uh, we'll start with the Finn. Isaiah Cartola scored the first try, all good and well. Uh, but I just thought his control in this game was fantastic. He is looking so mature for a young footballer, and I'm just loving every minute of what I'm seeing from Isaiah Cartola. I've been so impressed with him. Um, I'm just loving everything he's doing. Uh, I think the Dolphins have got such a special talent here. It'll be interesting to see how he and the Dolphins in general go once Wayne Bennett leaves at the end of the season. Uh, but I hold him in really high regard, Isaiah Cartola. I'm, I'm very... Very excited about him and his future in our game. Jeremy Marshall King was tremendous. Only the one try assist, but he was just scheming everywhere, causing havoc. Um, I think, you know, him, Appy, um, probably Wade Egan at the moment, to be fair. Man, those guys, they are just, they're, they're ruck recognition and how they just recognize what's going on in a split second and take advantage of it. It's just second to none in this competition. And having a hooker like that, fuck, it makes a difference. Uh, Cody Nicarima, I obviously mentioned Isaiah Katoa. Cody Nicarima is just playing his role perfectly. What about Hamiso when he went through? Is there a better sight in rugby league than Hamiso when he's just gliding away? I loved when they made the half break and Johnny Bateman is just fucking trucking because he can feel Hamiso coming next to him. Hamiso just flies past him, collects the ball and just never slows down, just glides around. He's an absolute freak, Hamiso. Such a talented footballer and such a pleasure to watch him. Um, Jeez, wasn't that long ago I was going, is he a fullback? You bet your dick he's a fullback. He's an incredible fullback. Uh, I thought Kenny Bromwich and Felice Cafusi, the old boys, I thought they were really good for the Dolphins as well, doing their job. Jesse Bromwich, very good as well, to be fair. Got through a heap of work. Isako, when he had his opportunities, he took them. He was good. Uh, look, good all-round game by uh, the Dolphins. A couple of injuries to come out of it. Tommy Flegler, going to wish him all the very best. And Herbie Farmworth, AC joints by the sound of it. They take on the Bronx next week, so hopefully uh, they're around for that but by the sounds of it they probably won't be I think they'll be out for a few weeks so not ideal there for the Finn the last guy I want to give a little shout out to and I give him a little mention every week but he just keeps on improving Jack Bostock um, his body's just changed so much I think he looks really good and I think he's got a big future as well all right the West Tigers weird game of footy uh, very weird game of footy. They lost a couple of troops and whatnot. Um, sort of got themselves back into it. You felt like they were starting to make up some ground on the Dolphins and they pulled away again. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I fucking it, honestly, I can't believe how different they look without Lockie Galvin. It's wild. Bud Sullivan came in, um, did all right, but just he's just not taking it with both hands at the moment. Bud Sullivan. Uh, they ended up taking him off the field, putting Latu Fino on at five eight. Then Appy had to come off the field. He got injured in the pregame. Had to take Appy off. Then they no sorry yeah. Then they then I think Latu got injured. So Bud Sullivan came off. I I thought Bud Sullivan was better in his second stint than his first. To be fair, uh, but I just. Bro, with the talent that Bud Sullivan's got, fuck, it's disappointing that he's not just grabbing it by the collar and just owning this team when he gets his opportunities. Really frustrating. And frustrating because I know how talented Bud is. Um, Alex Seafar scored a meaty. What about our boy Fate Ape? Uh, he's, he's had a bit of a tough initiation to first grade. He's had his moments, but it has been tough. Uh, scoring two tries, you love to see it. Uh, but Aiden Caesar. Look, kick two forty twenties had a hand in a try or two. Was very, very good. But the thing that stood out to me with Aiden Caesar, and it's the little one percenters in his game, and just watch him closely next week. Always leading their kick chase. You know, he's trying to lead that line speed. I just he's a, he's a he's a coach's dream, Aiden Caesar at the moment, doing a lot of good things and just just giving this team the steady hand that they need. You know, when they've got injuries and young guys and all all this shit going on, he's doing really well. Can't remember if I already gave Stefano a shout out or not, but I thought he was tremendous, playing some of his best footy over the last few weeks. Looked awful in week one, I thought, uh, but has really bounced back and gone good. Um, outside of that, I also thought Fanua Bolle, uh, 170 odd meters. How many tackles did he make? 31. Only the one missed. I thought he was very very good as well. He's turned a very good player. I thought Alex Twole, he came on and played 55 minutes, 100 odd metres. He would have made 40 odd tackles in that time. 36 tackles, zero missed uh, from Alex Twole. I thought that was a very good performance as well. Well, uh, once again, the guys got injured in that game. Both the Finu brothers, I believe, got injured. want to wish them all the very best and hope that they are sweet. Johnny Bateman in a similar boat. Uh, and obviously, Appy carried an injury throughout that one as well. All right, let's move to the last game of the review. As we set off the top, guys, uh, the Parramatta and Raiders game is on at the moment. We're going to have to review that over the next few days, or we'll just talk about it on Bloke in a Bar. Uh, but let's move to the last game, the one that we watched this afternoon. I'm um, just having a look. It's 12-0 in that Raiders game at the moment. 13-0, sorry. Uh, Savage just threw over a field goal. Uh, try scorers we've got Chris and Savage at the moment. Uh, let's move to the last game of the week. The Cowboys, 35, defeated the Titans, 22. Huge performance by the Cows. Uh, Titans, they did get themselves back into it at one point. And to be fair, I think if you're a Titans fan, you take a lot out of the second half. I know naysayers will say, oh, they played against 12 players. Sure, whatever. That was a 10-minute period. I thought for the entire second half, the Titans were a lot better. They had a lot more structure. They lost Kieran Foran. They just sort of made it work. And I thought the key to it, AJ Brimson got more involved. Um, I don't know what's happening with Foz, if he's injured or whatever. Been a fucking brutally tough year for Foles. We want to wish him and all of his family all the very best during this tough period, having a tough part of his career at the moment up there at the Titans. Uh, but I think they've just got to get him close to the football, AJ. Him and Jaden Campbell lit it up in the second half, did a number of very, very fantastic things. Cleese Haas scored a fucking brave try. Bo Furmore, if you held him for this long in Supercoach, full credit to you because I imagine, without looking at his score yet, I imagine he would have put together a pretty handy little nudge there. Uh, Bo Furmore, 76, very good. Another silver lining, I thought for Fafita looked unreal. He scored 76 in Supercoach as well. He was absolutely gas so when he gets his some match fitness uh, i think i'll be bringing for feeder in over the next few weeks um yeah look the titans tough gig um but yeah there's positives to take out of that second half they scored more tries in the second half than they have in the first month of the season so there are positives to take from it uh and i think you know going up against the north queensland side with a point to prove up there was always going to be a fucking tough gig let's be honest here um for the cowboys scott drink water Two tries, one try assist. Uh, he just, he was all over the park, Scotty Drinkwater. He's just such a talented footballer. Uh, coming off a pretty tough week last week where he made a heap of errors and whatnot. He bounced back well here. Obviously, he let the first bomb bounce. That had me a little bit nervous. But after that, he just lit it up. 188 run meters, three line breaks, one try assist, one line break assist, four tackle breaks. Uh, he was fantastic. No errors from Drinky either. Very, very good. I think he forced two dropouts, maybe one. Kyle Feltz scoring the try that put him as the highest try scorer in North Queensland Cowboys history. That is incredible stuff. And congratulations to Kyle Feltz. Semi Valame put serious pressure on him that last year. And I remember sitting in this studio uh, with the great Donnie Sports and shout out to you. You'll love this, you motherfucker. Uh, I said, I think it'll be Valame. He said, Felt. 
Felt is absolutely shit and he hasn't put a foot wrong since. So shout out to Kyle Felt. Shout out to you, Donnie. Very good shout. Got me all wrong. The name Sammy Valame has hardly even been said, which is wild. Val Holmes, another solid game. Uh, 216 run meters. What the fuck? Didn't score a try, which is going to cost me on about even, but 17 runs, 216 run meters, a line break, a try assist, four tackle breaks. He's playing incredible footy. One of which Zach, Zach Laybutt, all the very be best. I've heard those three words floated around ACL. Hopefully that's not true, but a very alarming signs. Mario Tolangi scored the first try. He was very good as well. Uh, Chad, look, Chad got Simbin. I don't know how you guys feel. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. I haven't spoken to another soul about this. I spoke about my Instagram story. I didn't think it was a sim bin. It was an ugly tackle. I didn't think it was a hip drop based on what I've been told a hip drop is, which seemingly changes every hit now and then. But I didn't think it was a sim bin. I just thought it was an ugly tackle and that's going to happen in contact sport when you've got guys running at each other 100 miles an hour and they're trying to tackle each other and wrestle each other to the ground, occasionally this sort of shit's going to happen. I don't think Chad deserved a sin bin. And I'll tell you what, if the Tides would have come back and won this one and I was Toddy Payton, it would have been a big, hey, what the fuck is doing there? Because personally, I didn't think it deserved a sin bin. Jaden Campbell, he was okay, thankfully. Could have ended very poorly. Uh, but once again, I don't think that was a hip drop. So I thought that was a bit harsh on the Chad. Uh, Reese Robson was tremendous. One try, two try assists. Ren for 160 metres out of hooker. What the fuck? Insane. And I imagine he would have made his 35, 40 tackles. I think he fell off a few. Um, 29 tackles he made, fell off two. Uh, but very good. Ruben Cotter got through a heap of work. 34 tackles, zero missed from Ruben Cotter. Ren for 140 metres. You'll love to see it. Griffin Neen came up with an error early and I was a little bit worried because he made errors over the last few weeks. But after that, I thought he was pretty solid, Griffin Neen. Um, I think he had one really bad missed tackle, but outside of that, pretty solid. Sam McIntyre had to play center at tough gig, handed himself out there. Um, so, yeah, look, Cowboys, uh, I think this game sort of went exactly how a lot of us expected it to play out. Jason Tamalolo, only the 33 minutes. This is going to be the rotation with him, though. It's just the reality of it. Um, yeah, look, good win by the Cows. Uh, got a little bit tighter than what they would have hoped in the back end, but... Uh, is what it is. They got the job done. Uh, 35 points to 22. Just a reminder too, guys, I have got those two passes to the field club. Saturday, 5.30, to watch the Cowboys take on the Parramatta Eels who are on the TV at the moment. Uh, I will be there. I'll be with my best mate. We're having a couple of brewskis, filming a bit of content, and you can join me with a mate. There's two free tickets up for grabs. You have to hit the link in the description. Fill out that for the Parramatta Eels and then keep your dog and bone on you on Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Thursday because I'll be ringing you. Make sure you fill out the survey if if you can make it to that game, uh, don't just fill it out. If you live in fucking whoop whoop and you can't make it, waste of my time, waste of your time. The winner will also get a signed Parramatta Eels jersey for 2024. So super exciting. Once again, clubs that are reaching out to content creators and people and doing stuff to engage the fans like the Parramatta Eels are, like the Canterbury Bulldogs are with Winston Neville. You absolutely love to see it in Parramatta. They're absolutely top shelf at it. They've been fantastic with me. It's been a very good relationship. And every few weeks, they reach out and we've got this idea. We want to do this, we want to do that. A heap more coming your way from the Parramatta Eels and shout out to them. Any other clubs that would like to reach out, by all means, let's do something. Let's get involved with something. Parramatta and myself, we've had a fantastic relationship and it has just been so positive. So shout out to the Eels for putting up these opportunities for me, but also for you guys to come along to the game. Make sure you fill out the survey below for the Parramatta Eels. Thanks for joining us once again on the Rapid Review, guys. As I said, uh, to get this out at a reasonable hour, we had to skip the Parramatta and the Canberra game. That's half time at the moment. So we'll catch up on that tomorrow on Bloke in a Bar. Thank you for joining us once again. If you want to join the Roo Crew, hit the link in the description. This description, there's a lot going on down there, a lot of links. You've got your Parramatta survey and you've got the Roo Crew. Make sure you come and join us in the Roo Crew. Some bonus content in there, a day in the life with me. I went out to Wentworth Park today to watch my brother play some footy. Took you guys along with me there so a bit of fun all of our notes from the weekend our super coach thoughts for next week and all the extra content in there coming this week in the Roo crew on patreon hit the link in the description thanks for joining us once again on the rapid review we will see you soon